This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Seriously, I'm about to start throwing shit. Um, the receptacle I'm plugged into only has 70 volts coming out of it. Frustrating as all get up, man. You know, sometimes this happens and I try not to lose my temper. I'm about to. So I'm, I'm hoping that my uh, cord will plug in something down that roof hatch right there, I'm hoping. All right, today's call is on a pizza prep table, a cold top that is not working right. I was called yesterday. This is a Kyrak prep top. This is an old school one that has uh, a pan chiller motor. Um, this one has actually been butchered. Check this out. I think I've shown this before. That's the refrigeration line. The, the, the thing had a leak and someone took it off. They had a guy that repaired it. It's a mess. But anyways, complaint is it's not temping. So the first thing on these things is the fan motor. The fan motor is not running on here. So I need to open this up and investigate why it's not running. Oftentimes it's a giant block of ice. So we'll get into it and see. Now understanding how this region works, we should have 115 volts supplied to that fan at all times. It never shuts off, even in defrost. Um, the power is the same power source that powers the bottom. So my bottom fan motor is running. So it's pretty good odds that we have power to that fan motor. But I'm going to go ahead and get a 716 nut driver and we're going to pull that guard off and take a look in there. All right, we got the guard off. Let's open this up. Mind you, this has this should have power, so you got to be careful. You can only get shocked unnecessarily. So. It's not iced up, which is, I'm completely blown away. It should be frozen solid. Uh, but the fan motor is not running. That's interesting. It doesn't feel like it's locked up. Huh. I'll have to dive into that. I mean, yeah, I think it is locked up. You can tell by the way it's stopping. I'm going to have to open that up, but it has a horrible wire connection down in there. Sometimes there's nothing you can do on these old ones. you got to have a connection like that. So I unplugged the motor, and we have 115 volts going to the motor. So we've got a bad fan motor but I have a feeling there's more to it because knowing this system, this should be frosty and frozen up. So but we're gonna change the fan motor first and then go from there. I haven't done a video on it yet, but my new van set up, but it's a mess. I still haven't completely organized it, but I've got this four drawer shelf unit and uh, should have, yeah. I commonly change these motors. So I got one right back here. All right, I swapped out the motor, but before I install it, um, we're gonna clean out that pan chiller because oftentimes you can see there's like gunk and stuff in there But it's huge. It goes the entire length and it's usually full of nasty food and different things But before we do that, I want to look into why this thing's not cold right now because it should be nice and frosty So if we come over here to their electrical panel And we open this up This is my breaker right there And this is the temperature controller and the time clock. So first and foremost the time is incorrect. It is uh, 9.47 a.m. and it says 7 p.m. So that's not good. 9.47, so that's the correct time. It defrosts all night on the cold rail. But this timer right here has a battery backup built into it and it should never lose time. Um, so it's a very good possibility that it's bad. But at the flip, on the flip side, we gotta wonder is, uh, have they been messing on it, messing with it too? So I don't know, that's the question. This though, is the problem. See how it says, EP, Edward Paul. I believe that means bad probe. We're gonna open it up and I'll show you how to tell. So the temp control holds itself in because of the design, but if you flip this over, it tells you. EP means probe failure or out of range, and it means bad probe. This control was changed by me all the way back in 2017. Um, the time clock was changed by us back in 2018. I don't know if that time clock's bad or not. I'm contemplating giving that another shot, uh, just setting the time on it. But we're definitely gonna have to change this control. Now you can buy the probes. I don't stock just the probes anymore. And uh, you can just change the probe, but I have a whole control we're gonna put a whole control in there. Um, I'm not going to waste my time going to supply house just to buy a probe. Um, you just got to think about the practicality. I got other places to be, so they just get a control. Now this isn't quite correct, but this probe 
is built into the box and it's been changed so many times that we had to run it exposed. Rather than just having the probe sitting on the pan chiller, we ran it in a copper line. Again, that's not correct. It's just sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But if you look at that, there's actually a pinch point right there. So I'm gonna pull the probe out, push the new one in. We should be able to feed it right through that copper line. And then it comes over into this electrical panel. It actually comes right over here, back there is that copper line. And then feeds right here. So I'll push it through real quick. Got the new probe pushed through. On these new ones, you gotta be careful because these ends, they're not hard anymore. They used to be hard and I've actually broken the sensors before on the new ones. So you gotta be cautious because they're soft and they'll snap. So. All right, I'm gonna get pushed in, get the fan motor, actually, and then before I push it in, we're actually gonna go ahead and soak that pan chiller, and I'll show you how we do that. The first thing I do is just pour some water in there and make sure that it actually drains out. Make sure the drains aren't plugged up, okay? And I'm coming over here, and uh, it's trickling out of the drain, but trust me, when I sanitize this, you'll see chunks of crap coming out of it. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, be very careful, use some sanitizer, I'm using bleach, but you got to be cautious about chemicals that you use because they can have chemical reactions don't cause any problems wad up some plastic wrap that won't get stuck in the drain pour your sanitizer in there whatever you use again being careful about food and different things and then fill it with hot water let it sit for about 10 15 minutes then flush that drain with buckets of hot water and you'll see the crap flying out of that drain you can see how they really open that up. But I mean, I guess they had to do what they had to do. There was a, a leak, I'm assuming, right in that area or something like that. And someone else did it besides me, but they cut the unit all up. But anyways, I let it sit for a little while. Um, this one's not horrendous, so it's probably gonna be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the drain. And uh, watch out, this is bleach water, so you don't wanna get it on your clothes. And um, we'll go over and see should be getting a good flow and again this one's not bad if you do this often it won't be as bad but if you don't do it very often it fills up nasty with stuff in there so it's always good to do it you just got to be careful about the chemical reactions and being cautious about that and we've got a pretty good drain coming out so we're just going to let it run for a bit it'll also that bleach water will also help to uh, break up anything in the drain lines too but you got to be careful because these are common drains, meaning that this base section is connected to that and on the other side there's a base section. So if the drain's plugged up, it could be overflowing that bleach water inside the box. So you really gotta think about that. I wasn't able to catch it on camera, but you can see that the flow is increasingly larger and that's because it's been breaking up stuff in the drain lines and it's getting better flow. You can see the chunks of stuff that are coming out that drain. They got messes. All right, you can see we got a nice clean pan chiller. We got a fan motor. Wait a minute, that's not spinning fast enough. Oh, maybe it is. It's just tripping me out. No, that's not moving enough air. There's a problem there. I got to figure it out. It's a bad electrical connection right here. We need to redo that. There's a problem there. It started to smoke a little bit right there, so that's probably what caused an issue with the old motor. So I'm gonna pull it apart. So, yeah, it's a bad connection, you can see. It just has corroded. The only problem is, is that it's really tight to get in there and strip those wires now. That's what sucks about these regions. There's no play, and that's why we had to run the sensor the way we did, so. Hopefully I can get in there and strip it. If not, we're gonna have to run new power, which will be a nightmare. All right, I'm trying to figure this out and it's insane because that wire is so short, but I was able to pull my thing and pull it up through that. This is just so I can get it stripped. Once I get it stripped, I'll put connectors on it and then I'll push it back down through very carefully and then have a long connection. This is very tricky. I'm having to do it one wire at a time, doing a butt splice and then heat shrink and then push the other wires through. So this, this is the ground wire. This is the only one, I'm, this is the first one. And then we'll do each one after that. This is a serious pain in the butt. Here's the power wire. We're gonna do a butt splice. And all I'm doing is extending them. And then we're gonna add the end kit on here. So yeah, this is a chore, but it's gonna go okay. One bit at a time. All right, we got them all through, all heat shrinked. And then now we got this to work with to extend the wires. I just need to connect this connector and put an end on the ground. 
told you I'd win. How's about them apples? So now we got that, that, and then I got a ground wire. The other one didn't have a ground wire because it was chipped off. So I'll just connect that and then hope everything works. Nice. All right, sensor back in there. Fan motor's blowing a crap ton of air. That's good, we're good. We're gonna put it together and bolt it all down. All right, so we're actually reading temperature now and we're gonna set this down for uh, 23 degrees. That's where we run on it. With a three degree differential. Boom, kicked on. So we're good, it's running. I'm gonna go on the roof and uh, make sure we got a clear sight glass and everything's good up there and watch it get nice and frosty down here. So I'll come up to the roof and uh, the compressor is hot but it's not running. So let's open up the uh, control cabinet and see if maybe it's off on defrost. System F, no, it's not off on defrost. So why wasn't this guy running? Good question. All right, I put my gauges on the unit and the compressor is, like I said, it was warm. It's hot to touch on the head. Um, and I uh, turned off the power to it and went ahead and checked across the windings. And uh, checking across the windings, I'm getting open. So it looks like we might be off on thermal overload. So let me try to cool the head of this compressor and then see if we can get it to start back up. I think I've had a problem with this compressor before, which makes me think we might have an oil issue or something. So I've got the cool presser tool running. You can see the steam rising off the compressor. That bad boy was hot. So I'm gonna let the cool presser run for a little while and then uh, I'll um, try to see if it'll reset, hopefully. Of course, it's raining on me now. You know, that's how this works. One thing after another, right? So my calls tend to work. All right, so I cooled it off and we're getting continuity. I'm gonna save you the trouble of showing every single one, but we got continuity, so we're gonna plug it in and turn it on and see if it runs. Let's cross our fingers, this guy starts up. I still don't know why it would have shut off though. That's the scary part. Six amps, it's running. I'm gonna watch it for a bit and see if the sight glass clears up and see what happens. Pressures are not horrendous. Condenser fan motor is cycling like it should be. They're all cycling on temperature. Now that it's raining pretty good, I need to close this electrical compartment before something gets wetter than it should. All right, um, so I have a theory. I had shut off the breaker to this system and there's no electrical communication between the roof and downstairs. It just simply works off of a low pressure control. If this low pressure control wasn't shutting off, then in theory that compressor could have gone off on internal overload. So we're gonna make sure, I'm gonna let it run for a bit. My sight glass is running clear, so that's good. But we're gonna make sure that um, uh, the low pressure control actually shuts it off on low pressure and it doesn't just sit up here and run, 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 run. We gotta figure out why this compressor shut off on thermal, so. Okay, let's kick the unit into defrost, see what happens. Should have closed the solenoid valve, I believe. So let's see what happens when I do that. If it pumps down and actually shuts off. There we go. It should already be shutting off any minute now. It's getting too low. That's what I thought, watch. Low pressure control is bad. So when I shut it off downstairs, it was just up here running, running, running in a vacuum or trying to and then Eventually the compressor went off on thermal. We got a bad low pressure control. Love changing these in the rain. Especially on these systems, look at the high side port, you can't take it off. It's a pain in the butt, man. All right, let's open this guy up. I'm letting it run. It's coming down, it's at 40 degrees right now. So it's still gonna be a while, but I'm gonna have to recover that charge right now, so. I'm gonna take a shortcut here. And I'm gonna try to do this without having to evacuate the system or change the dryer. I'm gonna pull it down to a slightly positive pressure and do a hot swap on the pressure control real quick. So that's the plan. Seriously, I'm about to start throwing shit. Um, the receptacle I'm plugged into only has 70 volts coming out of it. Frustrating as all get up, man. You know, sometimes this happens and try not to lose my temper, I'm about to. So I'm, I'm hoping that my uh, 
port will plug in something down that roof hatch right there, I'm hoping. I'm gonna get started while that's recovering. I'm gonna monitor it and I'm gonna get started on uh, swapping out this control. I'll just put the old one to the side while I'm recovering, get it all electrically hooked up and everything. Okay, so we're getting close to being done and we've only recovered approximately nine pounds. The minimum factory charge on this is 14 pounds. Um, the factory has actually uh, marked it from when they did the installation. So we look like we might be low on gas too. So we will likely have to add some refrigerant to this system. I'm gonna let it keep running and get a little bit lower, but we might have to add some refrigerant and pump down the receiver and check the liquid level or something. So, because we're definitely low. All right, wasn't too hard. Like I said, pumped it to a positive pressure. Um, swapped it out real quick, got them on there, we're leak free, you can see we still have pressure in the system. Um, but concerning is that whole nine pounds because the minimum charge is 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add this refrigerant back into the system and then we're gonna uh, add some more and check the liquid level of the receiver. I'm hooked back up to the recovery cylinder. I purged my line, zeroed out the scale. We're gonna go ahead and add charge into the high side right now. See as much gas as it'll take and then we'll charge in the difference. And just for giggles, I did go ahead and uh, did the math to make sure that the scale was accurate. When I uh, first started this, I um, weighed the cylinder by itself and then I subtracted the total weight and made sure that it was like nine pounds that I recovered. So, but that's why we checked that. But all right, so I'm gonna push that in there and then we'll start it up here in a minute. She took about seven pounds without turning it on. Uh, it's been sitting for about four minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up and uh, we'll finish charging it up. pressures to drop and we're gonna start adding gas into the low side I don't expect it's gonna take the full nine pounds because there's got to be more volume in the tank than what you're gonna put into the system basically um, to push it in so there's always gonna be remnants by the time you suck in what you can you're only gonna be able to suck in to the lowest pressure that it's running on this unless you pumped it down and went into a vacuum but you can't do that on one of these so there's always gonna be leftover refrigerant in the tank I imagine about half a pound. All right, so I put it into defrost so it would pump down and it's gonna pull as much out of the cylinder as possible. I'm also able to test the low pressure control to see what it shuts off at too. So it shut off too early, about 20 PSI. I'm checking across the switch. So we need to adjust the control a little bit more because we need to get it down to about, probably cut out at like 10 PSI. All right, so it shut off a little too low this time. It went down to zero and turn back on at 20. So I just got to adjust it a little bit more. Okay, I was able to fine tune it and I got it to cut in about 20 PSI and cut out about seven PSI. Um, we'll have to see if that'll work. As we're going into the summer, that should be fine or it will spring. In the winter time, we kind of run a problem with that with the cold ambient temps and the little small pan chiller that runs. We run really low suction pressure with one, just that one pan chiller that I was working on today runs. But this controls the base sections too. So when everything's running, it'll cut in and out. But in the winter time, if just the pan chiller's running, you run into some issues. But I think we're gonna be good. So I'm gonna fire this guy up for real and take it out of pump down. All right, so what I did was I was able to put 16 pounds of gas, including the recovery cylinder. The factory charge is 14 pounds of gas, but that's not a three quarters of a receiver. I know that for a fact. The 14 pounds of gas is like half the receiver or something. So uh, 16 pounds is all that I had. That cylinder's empty now. So the max I could put in there, total charge is 16 pounds. Um, I know that it could take more if I filled up the receiver all the way to the three quarter mark, but I know I'm not gonna be there yet. So that's gonna be all they're gonna get for now. Uh, we'll talk to them, see if they want us to come back and do a leak search. I really don't know that they're gonna want to. Again, we're in the middle of this virus and they just want minimal repairs. So, uh, but they're gonna be operational now, so. All right, this guy is almost down to temp. It's at 31 degrees right now. Let's take a look up top. It's nice and frosty like it's supposed to be. Fan motor's running good, so yeah, we're good. This was another one of those that started out as something simple. I walked up and I thought it was just a fan motor. 
went through the trouble of changing the fan motor, found that the wires shorted out, la di da, was difficult, fixed that to find another hurdle, the bad temperature controller. Went ahead and replaced the temperature controller to find that the compressor wasn't running. Cooled down the compressor, got thermal overload, reset, and then found the reason why. Okay, again, when we look at the big picture, we are solving the problem, not the symptom. We're not going in there and just saying, boom, this is done, you're good to go. We're going through everything, okay? But most importantly, the entire time, we're keeping the customer involved. We're letting them know what's going on. We're letting them make some of the decisions. We're just giving them the information and saying, hey, here's what I'm finding. This is how we should approach this. We have to start with this. Then we move on to the next step. That's troubleshooting, okay? It's not a walk in and say, you got a bad fan motor. It'll cost you X number of dollars to fix. And then it gets really confusing after that, okay? We always give ourselves a disclaimer and let them know that, you know, we have to do this before we can move on to the next step, all right? Um, it's always the customer's decision, you know, to decide which way they want to go. Now, uh, the unit also had a refrigerant leak, and I went ahead and topped off the charge. And for now, like I kind of said in the video and thought, they don't want me to leak for a leak at this time. They want to just let it go and see if we have any more issues with it. You know, when I make these videos, I'm trying to share my thought process and the way that I go through things. Okay, I am not perfect. Uh, my way is not the only way to do things. I realize that other people have different ways of doing it. Okay, this is just a glimpse into how my brain kind of works. Okay, and I know it's kind of screwy and you can probably see my um, craziness coming out when I when I try to express myself, but that's just how it works. Okay, um, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Remember that I do live streams Monday evenings at 5 p.m. Pacific time, work permitting, of course, where I usually answer all the questions that I get and comments and emails and different things, okay? You guys can feel free to send me an email at hvacrvideos at gmail.com. My information is also in the show notes of this video. Uh, also have a new YouTube channel called HVACR Tools. I've got one video up at the moment. I should be having another one coming up shortly. Um, and I'll start posting on that channel too, where I can just share my opinion on different tools that I have and what I like and what I don't like about them. Okay. So again, I really appreciate it and we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay.